Hey everyone, good to see you back and welcome to episode number 20 on how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLI. Um, today's episode is a little bit special because I'm not going to talk about anything technical. Um, a couple, like my original plan for this episode was to talk about table gen, but a couple of weeks ago something happened to me that made me change my mind. So far, um, in this video series, we created a bare bone and really simple compiler with a minimal set of features that is capable of just-in-time compilation and ahead of time compilation. It has all the major pieces and components in place, uh, even though they have like bare bone features, like minimal set of features, but they're connected to each other, they're wired up and they work together just fine. We talked about the LLVM, MLIR, and like some of the concepts associated with them, like pass management. We created our own MLIR dialog. Uh, we get the chance to actually lower that to LLVM IR. Um, we talked about the JIT engine, uh, how it works in details, um, code generation, and some of uh, some other concepts around LLVM and uh, MLIR. Even though we didn't have the chance to talk about core fundamentals of a compiler like um, CFGs, data flows, or DAGs, things uh, to that sort. But we talked about AST trees, semantic analyzers, and really, really um, basic stuff. So, so far we covered a basic compiler and like our current design uh, is kind of a typical design for a static compiler. Two weeks ago, actually, I had an epiphany. Like while I was working on the, um, the ring compiler, I realized that the current implementation, as I mentioned, is really suitable for a static compiler and not for a dynamic compiler, dynamic language like Serene. So um, while we like right now, when the compiler boots, we're going, we start a new JIT engine on the side and we can communicate to it, uh, communicate with it and use it to do things like macro expansion or anything uh, dynamic that we want for the compiler. But that's not what I'm looking for. Like I want uh, something truly dynamic. Um, so basically like it's it's been only uh two weeks i didn't have enough time to refine my idea but i looked into other implementations of lisps and uh, like common lisps some other some variants of um, scheme and some other languages and i've decided to make some changes to our current design and the main and the most important change would be to um kind of build everything around the JIT engine itself. So the the in like the JIT engine would be the very first thing that boots up and it like I'm going to use it to do everything like from uh parsing, from code generation, like IR generation, target code generation, uh runtime linking and everything basically. Um it's going like this decision by itself is going to make drastic changes in our design. But um, so far, whatever we uh, discuss is going to still hold. And um, if you're working on a static language or a static compiler, um, you don't have to change your design at all. But if you're like me and you want to use a dynamic compiler, you want to create a dynamic compiler, you need to make the changes that I'm going to make uh, as well. So with that being said, uh, and since we're on episode 20, uh, it's a round number. Um, it's a good time to actually wrap up the uh, part one of this video series. I hope it's been uh, like this video series uh, was fun and useful to you so far. Um, but for the part two, since I'm going to change the design, for the part two, we're going to talk about some of the core compiler fundamentals that we missed from part one. We had to skip over because just we wanted to have a, like a wired compiler, like very basic to actually implement our ideas on. So this is our chance to talk about them. And I'm going to make sure that we talk about the things that we want, like we need for the future. We have, we're going to create some basic uh, tools to actually helper tools and utilities to help us with uh, 
our journey to learn more about LLVM and MLIR. We're going to sharpen our skills on LLVM and MLIR, create some dialects, some pass managers, some passes, sorry, some optimization and things like that. Um, for the past two years, I've been studying about type systems, especially the mathematics of type systems. Like they're pretty old uh, in compared to like the computer science itself. So I, I read so many papers, books, and thing, uh, things like that around mathematics, specifically around the type systems. So kind of I wanted to start a parallel uh, video series to this, uh, to this one. So I get to actually talk about both at the same time. But I don't know whether that's a good idea or not. I'm still on the fence about that. But nevertheless, uh, part two, I hope like I, I find enough time and my studies goes in the right direction. So I get to talk about the mathematics of type systems. Um, while I'm covering the part two, uh, it's going to take a while, but while I'm covering the part two, which is heavily focused on the compilers, the general like the generic idea of uh, general idea of compilers. I get enough time to actually finish the design and as I start the ball rolling on the new design, like the implementation of the new design. So I have more material to cover on part three and focus more on the setting itself on part three. So um, that's a plan for the future, and um, I hope uh, like. Again, I hope this video series was fun and useful to you. Um, please do share your feedback with me. Uh, I, like It can help me to improve my content quite a lot. And if you're interested in working with me, along me alongside me on uh, Serene, please reach out to me. And see you on the part two.